Hello retro mountain bike lovers, I'm here at the Malvern Hills Classic and I'm going to go and geek out massively and find all the coolest retro stuff. Now this is something extremely rare. So this bike as far as I know, is the only one. Now, I did actually feature this in last year's video, but actually it's really poignant just to refer to this again because of the fact the GC are 50 years old. Now, this bike is their prototype suspension bike, and note that it follows the same form as their classic triple triangle designs. Now, this was part of the Gary Turner series of bikes, an authentic, oops, an authentic original GT. Now, there's a designer called Jim Busby who approached them and he had a design for a bike called the RTS, which is that suspension design. And overnight, when they're about to launch this particular frame, they scratched it. They employed Jim Busby, they bought his design and they released the GT RTS, which is one of the more iconic suspension designs out there. This bike, I didn't even know existed. Now, GT Retro Tech Shop, Omar, uh, the guy behind it all, he managed to find one of these for sale online. I don't even know how he came to find this thing. It probably came out of like a bin at the back of GT's factory and he's lovingly restored it. And it's just a thing of beauty and lovely to see it. He even had that shock rebuilt on there. Now this is a very special bike. So this is a Zin and I haven't seen an example of one of these that is this good, I would think ever. It's a replica of what Sally Hibbard used to ride in 1991, uh, which coincidentally, was my first time here at the Malvern Hills Classic and I got my picture in Mountain Biking UK magazine of me as a kid uh, getting a t-shirt signed which I've still got that she was riding the bike at the same time so that's kind of weird to see this bike. Now the Retro Bike community have basically got the frame and they've got all the componentry as close as possible. I think it's identical to what she used to race. Even got a number board on the front of when she won the British Championships. Even got the Campag levers on there, Campag everything. The Stenthos rims, I actually used to have these on my Muddy Fox that I would have been riding the same year that she had this. Um, and they're actually going to present her this bike at the Malvern Hills Classic. And she doesn't know about it because apparently this is one of the bikes she had that really meant a lot to her, but she sold it and she regretted it the second she sold it. So. A very special bike and it's a beautiful example. Lovely, lovely looking frame that. Absolutely beautiful. You know me and my retro tech. This isn't what I'd say is fully retro. 2005, so kind of just a bit old, but this is complete new old stock. Box fresh bike. Uh, Jamie from Mountain Mania behind me. Uh, one of the bigger collectors I know. He's probably got 100 old retro bikes. This is complete new old stock. It's been in a box since 2005. Managed to get the original box of fork to fit it. d tracks wheels on there. Uh, and as you can see, the frame design sharing a lot of similarities with what you're seeing today with a modern trend of high pivot bikes using idler wheels, as you can see here. Uh, this one also has an anti-brake jack brake arm, basically. So uh, it's like a torsion arm. Essentially, it decouples the brake from affecting the rear suspension. This was one of the most active bikes. Didn't matter what you were doing. Pedaling, going through the rocks, landing from jumps, uh, coasting, braking, didn't matter, the back end would be tracking the ground. And Danny Hart used to race on these back in the day. Super cool to see this. So, and also the tyres. So Michelin were the kings before Maxxis were even really a thing in mountain biking. So it was the Comp 16, um, the Comp 32, Trans Alps, various ones. The Comp 16, which is this one, later became the DH 16. I think this one's labelled up, the back one is anyway. And they were ultra soft compound tyres with unbelievably good casing. You could hammer these things into rocks and they wouldn't split. Unbelievable tyre and that really, when they stopped producing these tyres, paved the way for Maxxis to come in. Because overnight, when you couldn't get these any longer, Maxxis were there with a high roller. And some racers were already using them and it was an obvious, just it was the nearest thing possible. You look at the design, shares a lot in similarity with that early high roller, uh, but it came from here first. Okay, so this one, Cannondale Super V 3000, called the Super V because it kind of resembles a flying V shape, V guitar, whatever you want to call it, uses a head shock design system. So this was something that Cannondale exclusively developed, although there was a brand called Action Tech that also had something similar. Cannondale one had lockout control on the top of the handlebars here. This one's using the pepperoni fork blade. So this was one of the earlier ones that was a curved blade. Later they came with this straight blade. I actually prefer this because that's just such a lovely shape. The frame itself using the Fox shock on the rear. I don't know if this was an Alps or not, I forget. Uh, single pivot, classic frame design. 
Some people absolutely detested these back in the day, and I can kind of see why, but for me, this is a thing of beauty. Uh, XCR M900, I think, on here. Um, I think I'm right in saying. And I've just noticed the skewers on here, are like little mini ratchets, the little gonzo ones. Uh, you've got to check these out. Absolutely beautiful bike. Huge bar ends. Look at the ratio of like how long the stem is versus how narrow the bar are and how big the bar ends are on there. Uh, classic flight titanium saddle as well. Probably the most iconic, I think, saddle of that era. Um, and probably one of the most comfortable saddles ever. You seem to be looking at a lot of Zins today. Um, this one's a Z Centaur. But I wanted to look at the front hub on it. That's an original Hope hub with the Generation 1 disc brake. So the really early Hope disc brakes, I've only ever seen the ones that have a literally a band on that clamp around a fork. We've seen it quite a few times. I've not seen one of these that mounts directly onto a fork before. It's surprisingly clean looking. It looks like it works pretty well, to be fair. The hub though, compared to what we know as Hope hub these days, look how no frills that looks. It's still got a Hope Technology Limited um, made in UK on the front there. Now I've got to say, by far, this is the coolest one I've seen yet today. Canada SM700, 700 and a half you could say, kind of like a later year model. Amazing pink color. You probably noticed it's got 24 inch rear wheel, 26 front, original mullet style setup. I mean, just wow, look at the thing, the classic pedals on here, Suntour XE stuff on it. Check the brakes out and also check the fact it's got the original dropper post on there, so that's a height right. So all you do is you set it to the height you need it to return to, undo your quick release, sit down on saddle as hard as you can, lock it in the quick release lever and then undo it to return it back and it'll be nice and straight thanks to the fact you've got it set up there. Absolutely gorgeous bike. I can't believe the condition of this. Stunning, absolutely stunning. Also got quite an unusual bottle cage on here using Velcro. Really good idea if you live somewhere dusty. Like, you're never gonna lose the bottle, are you? Classic Yeti arc action here. Uh, the gray finish with a like, neon yellow. Not seen those elite bottle cages before with a paint flicker on, they're pretty cool. Purple Cook Brothers cranks, uh, Manitou one fork, Panarisa smoke and dart tyre, so directional tyres, front and rear. Richie Vantage WCS rim, so the World Cup series spec. ATAX stem, I uh, think is that a King headset on there? I can't see, uh, I guess that's a King headset on there. Uh, Hyperlite bars, classic thumb shifters on there. Oh man, it's got it all, and it's a Yeti, and it? Bang on, super nice all the way. Also love it, I don't know if there's one on that side. The Oakley sticker on the top tube. Back in these days, Oakley was the only thing that you could put on your eyes. They cost a fortune compared to any inferior glasses out there, and you had to have the sticker. And a few retro people out there I know still running the old classic Oakley stickers, but you run them on the back of your van, Oakley Thermonuclear Protection. And I may know someone that adopted one of those stickers to say Thermonuclear Erection. The coolest thing that's happened to me in a long time, this has happened to me here in the Melbournes. Um, I've just seen my first proper mountain bike. All right, so not the actual one, but the same model frame. Now, I first came to the Melvins, I'm pretty sure it was 1991, and that's the bike I was on when I came here. And this story gets even weirder. So that year, I had a white t-shirt, used to get all the autographs on it. In fact, Steve Bear took a photo of Sally Hibbard signing my t-shirt. Uh, I've still got the t-shirt. And Sally Hibbard was on the Zin bike that we've also got in this very same video. So it's all just a bit like, well, this is strange. So not only that, but Chris and the Retro Bike guys got this bike, they basically recovered it from a skip, rebuilt it with XR's 400 LX, which is what I had on my one at the time. And they basically managed to get the bike for a tenner and they've given me the bike. So I've, I've got my own bike back essentially. So I'm gonna have to turn this back into what mine was originally. So it did have the full 400 LX on it and I had a flex stem on it, I had a straight bar, I had a set of Onza bar ends, I can't remember if they were ski or L bends. I had the XT server wave STI levers with a little window on them. I had those brown, in fact, just like those, the 1.7 inch Richie WCS Z Max tires. Um, Campag Stenthos rims, which are the same rims that are on Sally Hibbard's bike, incidentally. And I would have had the DX SPDs. I'm gonna say I had a turbo light saddle because couldn't afford a flight back then. The turbo was what Dave Hemming used to use, so you copy Dave. Um, it looks very similar to the Vetter light, in fact, that's on this one here. Yeah, and that's about it, but I'm stoked to see this, that this was the first bike. My dad bought me this bike for Christmas in what, like 1990 or 1991. Look at the square profile tubing that blends into the round tubing, and also the classic wishbone seat stays. That's what Muddy Fox were really known for back in the day. It's funny, because to a lot of people, this won't look like much, but this is nothing but memories of good times, especially here at the Melvins. So I'm just like, absolutely made up. Um, out of the corner of my eye here, I can see a Dave Yates donkey's knob and it's got an NTI stick on it. So NTI, Nickel Trading International, one of the first distributors of RockShox Forks. 
that I used to, from the bike shop I worked at in London, um, called uh, The Bike Shop in North Harrow. I used to take fork crowns that needed, or bits of fork that needed servicing, over to NTI. I was like a Saturday boy that used to sort of courier stuff around. And that's when I ended up meeting chips and loads of people that still work in the bike industry. So the Dave H Donkey Snob came out shortly after the Shaz Roberts Dogs Bollocks, which is a bike we're just going to look at over here. So this is the Shaz Roberts Dogs Bollocks. So this bike quite literally was the Dogs back in the day. And uh, if I could say one more time, uh, it's really going to annoy the AD guys to traffic this video, but I have to say it because it's the Shaz Roberts Dogs Anyway, beautiful handmade British bike. Just absolutely wonderful. Dave Hemming used to ride Shaz Roberts frames back in the day. And well, yeah. And then just look, there's so much to talk about here, so much to discuss. Alpine Stars Chrome Mega, there's an Almega over there. So this is the Almega that I was just referring to. So classic elevated uh, chainstay bike. So a lot of people still ask why bikes used to be like this. To get the chainstay nice and short, which is what we used to like in the 90s, it was really difficult to try and fit the tubing in there. Like if you think how short that is, with a triple chain ring set up down there. So you used to suffer from clearance issues and chain suck. So by bumping a chain stay up here, you get to get around the problem essentially, uh, end up with a pretty wacky design. Just notice there's an X-Lite sticker on here. And to those of you who don't know, X-Lite is now Muckoff. So Muckoff was one of the products by X-Lite who used to make quick release skewers, bar ends and all sorts of stuff. And uh, Muckoff sold so many and did so well that it started to become the sort of the dominant part of that brand. And when when Alex took it over from his father Rex, who passed on, um, he rebranded the company as Muckoff, essentially, which is what we know today as the pink cleaning stuff. Uh, also, you've got Cosmic Trail bum bag on there. They used to make frame packs as well, and used to make all sorts of other stuff. And one last thing, if you look at the modern day Garmin and you think that it's a real cool piece of kit, ain't got nothing on the old school Avocet 30s. That's just a cool little thing. Check out how sort of kitsch and retro it is. Love it. Oh, I am so retro. No, I'm not. <laughs> I'll, I'll never get retroed out. Look at all this stuff. It's amazing. Uh, I'd love to know what you thought was the coolest retro bike I put in today's video. Let us know down there. Uh, don't forget to keep an eye on the GMBN Tech Instagram. I'm going to be posting loads of shots I take here because obviously there's too many bikes to cover, but I can whistle around and get loads of shots really easily. Uh, give us a like and a subscribe uh, for the channel. Thank you very much for watching. See you soon. Ta-ra.